Hello, everyone. Welcome to Mind Pump. In the first half of this episode, we talk about why it's important to get your blood tested, even if you're young and feel great, why kids today are less likely to engage in risky behavior, as well as other topics. In the second half of the show, we coach four live callers on questions such as, I'm cutting, but I'm still getting stronger. How is this even possible? I have limited time to train, so if I have to choose between sleep and priming, what should I prioritize? I'm getting gassed out because of the short rest periods in phase three of MAPS Anabolic. What do you suggest I do to improve? And how can I focus on building my shoulders going through the short MAPS 15 minutes workouts? Finally, we're posting more and more clips every day to our Mind Pump Clips channel. We've upped our frequency. And if you want to get more information about losing fat, building muscle, or any other topic you want, in an easy to search and easy to share format, go to Mind Pump Clips right here on YouTube. All right, enjoy the show. Most people get blood work when there's a problem, but there may actually be more value in getting blood work when you feel great. This gives you a baseline so you know what feeling good looks like with your blood work. Then if something goes wrong, you get a blood test, you can compare the two because there is a great individual variance from person to person when it comes to things like hormones in particular. I love, Very logical. I love that advice. Um, I mentioned on an earlier podcast that was something that Katrina's mom uh, recommended to all of her kids. And, you know, at first I didn't think that was that important. I figured like, oh, you know, like I'll, if I feel bad, then I'll go check right. my hormones. Then the doctors will tell me if it's good or bad. And obviously through my journey of, you know, hormone replacement therapy and watching my blood work and all that, what I learned was that you know, there's such a huge range of what is considered normal or okay that you could you could waver from being at the top end of okay, move all the way down to the bottom end of okay, and a general practitioner will go, "Oh, you're fine. You know, you're not you're you're not in any danger in this range, but you may be suffering from these symptoms of feeling terrible. Like, oh, I just don't have energy. I don't have the drive I used to have. Like my libido is down, but then I go get my blood work and the doctor says I'm okay. So then you're like, what the fuck? But had I known that I run at this level on the high end of normal and right. I'm now at the low end of normal, which by the way, could be a 50% reduction. Like you can't tell me that that's not a significant difference. Well, what and knowing that would be- Huge. Yeah, and what it does, it gives them, um, it, it would give them an accurate reference point because otherwise the reference point is based Super off generic. Of, yeah, a general sample. So they've actually done studies on this on, um, um, for example, on testosterone, and they found that, and the study was actually to see how much testosterone levels affect things like uh, strength and muscle growth. So that was actual study, which was kind of cool. And what they found was that, and they, these were all men within a healthy range, okay? So it wasn't like they took people super low, super high. It was like, okay, we're all... Within, within a range of each other. But what they found was that the, the testosterone levels didn't have an impact on the muscle growth and strength. It was the androgen receptor density, <clears throat> meaning you know, one person could have 30% lower testosterone levels, but because they have more androgen receptors, their testosterone is actually having exerting more of an effect. So what does this mean? Well, it means that if you don't have yourself as a reference point, then the best you could do is start to play around and start to guess. Well, I kind of feel good. I kind of don't. Like, what's going on? This can also be true with nutrients, hmm. like vitamin D levels, magnesium. Um, if you look at any lab that you get from your doctor, whether it's nutrient levels, inflammatory markers, blood lipids, whatever, it's going to have a range that's going to say, here's what is considered normal. But that's so general. I think it's far more valuable to have a reference range of when you feel good. So if you feel great, now you have a, a snapshot of that. Then if something goes wrong, rather than going off this general lab, yeah. you can say, when I felt great, here's where I was. And it, this, this means also, by the way, because people sometimes think more is better, not necessarily. Like more testosterone might not be better. More mm -hmm. thyroid may not, may not be better, even if it's all within range. More vitamin D levels may not be better. So you could go to the doctor and be like, man, I feel terrible. Doctor's like, okay, let's do some tests. Then you compare it to your reference and you may actually be like, wow, I'm within range, but my, my magnesium so high compared to how it was before and everything else seems similar. Maybe it's too much. You know, I had a client once that she was suffering. I'll never forget this. She was, she was getting like these kind of neuropathic issues. She was like fingers tingling and all this other stuff. 
And she had done red and she talked to her doctor and they're like, oh, your vitamin B levels might be too low. So she was like supplementing, supplementing, supplementing. Finally, she found this other doctor who says, uh, you're taking too much vitamin B or Bs and that might be what's causing it. She brought it down and then she found that she was okay. Now, had she had a reference, right. she might've been able to go and see, oh, it's so much higher than what it was when I felt good. So there's such a, a difference because it's not just nutrients, it's uptake of nutrients, it's cofactors, it's receptors that um, hormones attach to. It's also the ratio of hormones. For example, right. you may have high testosterone and estrogen may be in range, but the ratio of estrogen to testosterone is no longer ideal for you. So now you feel like you actually have low testosterone when in fact it's just the ratio. So having a reference is so valuable. I wish I had a reference uh, oh, yeah. from when I was younger. I think that's a big misconception. Uh, <clears throat> the general public is like, if they see a deficiency, you know, in one thing, especially with hormones, because it's so uh, complex in, in terms of being able to get them all to be in perfect unison and balance, um, that just raising one, if it's deficient, is going to like solve all the problems. When in fact, they also have to kind of figure out how the other ones interact with totally. them and then, you know, make sure it's the right dose. And um, may maybe it's bringing up a different hormone they didn't even. Uh, consider this is what's happening too with my wife. So it's like, it's interesting to see how they're being able to kind of manipulate it. So it gets back to the optimal balance. Yeah. And so what happens is if you don't have a reference for yourself, then what they end up doing is they end up using this general reference. And then it's a game of how do you feel? Wait three more weeks. How do you feel? Wait another 90 days. Let's try this. Let's try that. When if you had a reference, you could very easily show your doctor, your practitioner, yeah. and the doctor could be like, oh, we let's try and match those, those levels that you had when you felt great. And now it's like the guesswork is is gone. Like you've saved yourself, you know, because I know like even, even a hormone like thyroid, which if you had to supplement with a hormone, thyroid is, is pretty good. Um, mm -hmm. it, it's, 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 you know, I'm going to use, I'm going to say this for lack of a better term. It's an easy fix. Not easy, but it's an easy fix. But I know people who've had to go on oh. thyroid, and it's like a but year getting process. Getting the dose right is is a long process. Totally, yeah. totally long yeah. process. Well, isn't that one of the things that Courtney has yeah, battled with? Yeah, she's been with, right? battling that, and you know, dipping testosterone, and then and two, f finally figuring out she's a little bit estrogen dominant, and so it's like all those factors combined. You know, they have to find because it took like a good. A uh, year and a half or so for just for the thyroid medication to yeah. really take effect and like find that right sweet spot. So well, I'm I'm even on my my third hormone clinic. You know, by the time it's it's taking me this long of adjusting uh, the days, the dosage, to monitoring the blood work every three to six months to really kind of like fine tune exactly where I think I I feel the best. You know, it's cool about you bringing this up, and I know we haven't announced this on the podcast yet and we're not due to officially announce it but to kind of uh forecast what's coming for the audience which is really cool and i love that we're doing this <clears throat> is our partners transcend with our the hormone therapy uh is going to start giving four free blood work for our audience a yeah. month That's so be awesome. that'll be one of the one when you hear us talk about this is this is not one of those times but since you brought this up you reminded me of that you will announce is, it when we get yeah this time. is something that we officially negotiated in the contract this year for our audience is that just straight four four blood panels basically free for our audience and we'll figure out how we'll we'll gather that or figure who the winner is every single month but it's something that we want to do consistently every month for the audience yeah if you want cool. more information um on for yourself you just go to mphormones.com and then you know we have uh experts on there that can work with you but i i wish i had a baseline for myself because <laughs> yeah, otherwise same you're going off of you know like like to give an example another example and i'll use just because this one I, I know the most about, right? I'm, no, I'm by no means an expert in in, in hormones or um, you know nutrients. I have some knowledge, but no, by no means am I an expert. But just with testosterone, for example, let's say you go on testosterone replacement therapy because you've exhausted all the natural methods of trying to raise testosterone, whatever, and you're just in this place where you're like, okay, I'm going to use exogenous testosterone. The process by which your body produces testosterone also produces other hormones other pro hormones, DHEA, pregnenolone, you have, um, you know, estrogen balance with it, estradiol, this free testosterone. So it's way more complex than just, here you go, here's your testosterone, let's raise it. And initially maybe, oh my God, I feel great. And after a few months or six months, you're like, well, I don't know if I'm feeling so good. And then they got to go back and look at all these other things. So when you have a baseline 
oh my God, the value, it would be so great. I wish I could do that. I wish I could have gone to someone and said, oh, here's what it was when I felt pretty damn good. Yeah. And, you know, and then they're like, oh, cool. Now Let's we have some targets. levers and get us back to that optimal balance. Well, think about it. Think about how individual your workouts are, yeah. like how your workouts, the most effective workouts you can do need to be individualized to you. Think about your diet, right? Think about your lifestyle. Now when we're talking about blood levels of hormones and, you know, nutrients and inflammatory marker, all that stuff. Like it gets even more, it gets even more crazy and, um, uh, and, and more individualized. So you could have two people and have their panels look identical and one of them can feel great and the other person can feel terrible. And then you're either, you're going to play this game of, <coughs> all right, well, let's mess with some stuff, wait a month, mess with more, some more stuff, wait a month. And yeah, it's kind of a long drawn out process. So aren't, um, uh, testosterone supplements one of the most profitable or the most sold supplements on the market it's not there, most sold it? but definitely one of the most profitable the margins on them are pretty is that, be pretty is that true yeah and for the most part too they're a, kind of a waste of money no yeah some of them work but they work when you have low testosterone uh like really low testosterone and then there's also kind of this um like limited span of effect so let's say you take a supplement like ashwagandha or tom cat um, ali yeah both of which have been shown to raise testosterone. Um, do like you- shelf to that. Yeah, do you continue to see and feel the effects a year after taking them? Um, in my experience, no. In my experience, you don't. My experience, it's like 60, 90 days. And then after that, you kind of don't get the same effect anymore. Um, and then you got to go off and then go back on type of deal. But I can definitely see the value of them in combination with things like lifestyle factors and other things. So I don't, I don't think they're not valuable, but, um, the other thing too, is there's so many products out there that will improve the symptoms of low testosterone, but not actually raise testosterone. So like there was a very popular supplement back in the day for testosterone raising. It was called uh, tribulus, uh, terrestris. That was the name of it. And, uh, it was always sold as a test booster. It doesn't raise testosterone, but what it does is it increases libido. Mm. So guys would take it and be like, oh my God, it's working. My testosterone's going up. It's like, no, you're just, you're getting hornier. It's more horny. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Like, oh, no. Well, I mean, yeah. I mean I, that's what I experienced. For the listeners that have been listening for a long time, they may recall when I went through that process of trying to naturally raise my testosterone for, it was over a year. A I mean, couple, we were doing everything. Yeah, yeah. And, we, and you had me on all kinds of supplements, all the ones that you listed. And I remember that, the initial feeling of like, oh, bro, I, I think I'm feeling better. Like, yeah and feeling like I was on the on the mend, and then feeling it kind of plateau, and then kind of dip back down yeah. again, and yet I was still consistent with it, and being like, oh man, that sucked. Like I felt a little bit better from it, but then after that, it kind of felt like it like ended, and it really was maybe a couple months. It didn't last. It didn't last very long. Exactly. That feeling of it was it was getting better, and then it, and then when, of course when I went and did the blood work, what I saw was it really hadn't moved the needle. Yeah, at once all. I hit my mid thirties, obviously this is all hindsight, right? So it's clear now, but it wasn't so clear then. Once I hit my mid thirties, I was cycling supplements like that so often because I would feel so terrible. Now looking back, and obviously realizing that I had uh, like kind of permanently negatively affected my hormones because of some of the actions I took in my early 20s, which by the way, now there's studies that show that if you take hormones in your late teens, early 20s, the odds that you'll have, that you'll struggle with low testosterone in your 40s is the high. Increase, right? Yeah. Yeah, it's really high. I mean, that's so, what I attribute mine to. I mean, yeah. I, I've openly talked about my steroid use in my early 20s and not only using it, but then using it so inappropriately, not knowing what the hell I'm doing. And thinking that I was invincible then and then paying for it when I hit 30. And that's about when I felt it was 30. So mm -hmm. I had done it in my early 20s and then off and on through my mid 20s. And it wasn't until I hit 30 did I really start to feel. You know what sucks about it. that? And I'm going to be really honest, right? Because I, you know, I, I went that that route too. There was, uh, you know, I've talked about this in the, in the early 2000s. They had all these over-the-counter designer steroids. And so I, I think I felt better about it. It was the same thing though. And had you told me, then, hey, if you do this, be a high chance you're going to have to go on testosterone replacement therapy in 20 years. I probably would have been like, all right, I'm going to yeah. keep going. Oh, I you know what I mean. I mean, I, knew I don't the, know if I, I can stop. Oh, I knew the, I knew the risks that I was taking. I'm like, that's. Uh, I knew like it. I people ask that too a lot, right? So I've been asked that, and I I don't regret it. Like it's also given me the opportunity to communicate it because I'm not the only person that that's done something stupid right. like that. 
And so I feel it's given me the opportunity and we have a platform that I can share my story and like, you know, tell people to be cautious and, you know, be smart. Like, but I don't regret it. And I know that if, you know, 40 year old wiser me came back and tried to talk to 20 year old me. Even if it was you, yeah, even yeah, if you appeared, yeah, yeah, oh my yeah, God, yeah. it's me in the future. Yeah, I'd, be like, <laughs> I'd just be like, all right, cool, like, bro. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> See you in 20 years. You look all right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah, you look cool. You're doing fine. Yeah, you look like you're all right. <laughs> you're doing so. all right. Today's giveaway is MAPS Split. This is a bodybuilder style MAPS program, advanced bodybuilder style MAPS program. Here's how you can win free access. Leave a comment below this video in the first 24 hours that we drop this episode. Subscribe to this channel and turn on notifications. Do all those things. And if you win, we'll let you know in the comment section that you got free access to MAPS Split. Also, we have this huge sale going on right now. We created three workout bundles. So this is multiple workout programs each one giving you up to nine months of planned workouts, nine months of exercise programming, perfectly scaled for three different types of people. Each one of them is discounted by $300 or more. So huge savings. Here's what the three bundles are. We have the new to weightlifting bundle. Great for those of you that are getting started. We have the body transformation bundle. This is great for those of you who are intermediate to advanced. And then we have the advanced bundle, the new year extreme intensity bundle. If you want to learn more or sign up, just click on the link at the top of the description below to do that. All right, here comes the show. How <laughs> funny is that? So, so you know, you, you like, Justin, your kids are getting to the teenage years. I have like, you know, two yep. kids, one of the beginning teenage years, one that's deep in them. And you just realize how, and I think back to when I was that age, and I'd say up until my mid-20s. Fun, it's funny too, because research shows how the brain develops. It doesn't fully develop until you're like 25. Oh, yeah. When I think back... There's, That's a fact. You could not have told me. You could not have convinced me. I thought I knew. Like, for sure, I know what I'm doing. I know what I'm talking about. Mm. So to be in that place now as a dad, how frustrating that is to be oh like, my oh. God. And they're yeah. so they're, confident. Yeah, yeah, yeah like, dude. You, you know nothing. Yeah. 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 But yeah, that's just one of those things. And, and that's why it's so uh, critical, like as, as they're growing up and they're getting exposed to, you know, all these things that, Especially that, could, now. that could affect their, uh, their overall development and stay with them a long lasting effect through the, the later years. Dude. You know, it's like, you gotta be conscious of all these things. Dude, I also, I, that it also makes me think about now you guys are ahead of me. All three of yeah. you are ahead of me with like age with kids and stuff, but I, that always makes me go to like, I can't, it's going to be interesting when I'm faced with these types of situations and conversations with my son because, and I already see that, I already see so much of myself in him. It's going to be hard to be actually mad yeah. because, I mean, and and I don't know if like you guys, but so when I see like a dad get really pissed off about his kid doing something, I'm just like, he's you, asshole. Yeah. You know, yeah. it's like, how can you be that mad? Like, you, how can you be that mad? I'll tell you when you get mad. When you see them, when <laughs> well, you see like you get mad at yourself too. Yes. You know, like, and you do get mad at yourself. Right. <laughs> but but I mean, that, so that's yeah. how I feel like I would be, I'd be more like that. Right. Like, God damn it. That's a shitty ass yeah. trait of mine. You know, you know what it is? Like, you know what it is, <laughs> though? Half of what I'm experiencing. I was talking to a friend of mine who's an expert, right? With, uh, she, she works with teenagers quite a bit. And she said two things that, like, I was like, oh, I guess you're right. She said, number one, teenagers have this remarkable ability to know where your line is and to go across it, right? Oh, yeah. So like my line is way different than my parents' line, like way different. Like if mm -hmm. one of my kids was like, hey, I want to try, you know, pot, you know, or I want to drink at a party. Like that would have been my parents would have lost their mind. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. So my line is like, okay. So I, so your kids will know. <laughs> and this is like, and she told me that she goes, this is actually a part. It's of, programmed in us, right? Yes. Evolutionary. So right? they'll know what your line is, yeah. however far it is. <laughs> yeah. And they'll go to that and pass it. So that's number uh, one. And then number two. So, okay. So okay. to that point. So whatever your line is, bro. Is, is, well, to that point, then, <laughs> is, it, is that a, as a dad, is this, is a smart strategy to pretend like your line is much lower? You know what yeah. I'm saying? So like when my son does, like, pot, what? How dare yeah, you? You yeah, know what I'm saying? But inside yeah. I'm like, ah, whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So maybe that's the move is to pretend your like line is- Yeah, like way above that. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, it's funny we're talking about this because I wasn't sure whether or not I was going to bring it up on the show because it's like, you know, people like probably have different ideas whether or not this is like socially acceptable or not. But like, I mean, I've told you guys, like I'll let like my kids like take a little sip of alcohol every now yeah. and then. So- we were in Scotland and uh, we went to this uh, bar because we were like waiting in between time before we had to kind of go to this different uh, uh, location where, where this tour guide was taking us and where everybody's going to the bathroom and all this. And we're like there and we're like ordering a scotch. And so um, one of the kids that was with us, like, 
like dipped her finger in like her mom's scotch and like drank it was like Bleh! you know like had that reaction i thought it was pretty funny and so i i brought ethan over and uh to try mine and then he <laughs> he tried to play it off like he was all like cool you know, cool guy because like, <laughs> you know the, the other girl too and, and by the way she's like a little cutie and like she's about his age and yeah. so he's oh, so like, trying to her yeah so he's like trying <laughs> to impress her like the whole trip it was pretty hilarious but so he takes a sip and then he's like, yeah, like pretends everything's okay. He's like, Wah! <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, yes, like that's the exact response I wanted. Yeah. You know, like I've, it's, that's such a, a taboo thing now though. My grandpa, like, I mean, I had to smoke a whole cigar oh. with him. To where to the point where I got sick. Yeah, my, he my, caught you? my mom did the same thing with cigarettes with me. He just wanted to do yeah. that. So you know was, what? I yeah. bet it kept you away from cigars. It and did. I never yeah. touched like cigarettes, cigars, like until way later. But you uh, know what? The strategies in the back back in the day were to traumatize the shit out of your kids so they listen. <laughs> <laughs> I swear to God, dude. Everything. Okay, so even like you, you know, like all those um, uh, what do you call them? Like fables and stuff. Yeah. It's oh. always it's always about like you're to gonna die. Like, yes. Like all the, they scare the shit out of the kids if they. They leave and they go into the woods are gonna get eaten by some witch so i was taught i was you i was saying literally talking about this with, with a friend of mine and i said you know what it makes sense though because back then you had six kids you couldn't pay attention to all of them because yeah. you had to go wash clothes by hand and go like make food and like yeah. dad is out you know you know breaking rocks so you're like how do i keep these kids like safe you scared the fuck you traumatize them <laughs> scared the <laughs> living hell out of them you just traumatize the them bad that was always the go to <laughs> bro read the stories like all the vikings the same thing they had like love stories Aesop about like they're the, all like that yeah, like lullabies Hans where they would yeah. bro, they'd Hansel talk about throwing them in the crevice of a Gretel. glacier Hansel and Gretel like the woman's fattening up the little children so she can eat them exactly. that's the story exactly and we've actually it's watered horrifying. it down. oh it's terrible you know yeah. ring around the rosy it's about the bubonic plague yeah yeah it's just about the black death yeah you it's know, little, talking about kids being like, sweet. I, I, you just reminded me, uh, and, and Doug got to experience a little bit of this up in uh, Truckee. Um, you have, bro, you have to make an effort to get with Jason and his family just so you can hang out with his little daughter. Oh, great. His is, she, is she him? Bro, she is so him. She is a little Isn't female. That karma? It is, it is so, <laughs> and it's so funny to watch him have to like navigate it and discipline her and like keep her in, like the whole time he's got these three daughters and they're all amazing. And the one though is like demands his constant attention and constantly having to corral her and stuff like that. <laughs> and you can see it in him, like the, the frustration and the pride at the same time, like frustrated that he's constantly having to do this, but also like the pride like, oh my God, she has told me, I mean, when she... I hadn't seen, I haven't seen her in a long time. How and, old is she now? Uh, what'd you say? 10? Uh, maybe, yeah, 10 or oh. 12. I'm not oh, sure. Oh, now it's getting good then. Yeah, yeah, oh, right. bro. Now it's getting so good. So I walk, she walks in and I hadn't even seen her yet. And I come and, and I'm still learning each of the, the daughters, yeah. which one's which and everything like that, right? That we've only been around each other that much since he's, they have all grown up. And so I come walking around, she comes out of the laundry room and she like steps right in front of me. She goes, so you're Adam. <laughs> right? and I go, it's kind of smaller. She's like, so uh, you're a little bit bigger than I thought you were, <laughs> right? Wow. And then I, I just kind of say hi wow. to her. And Dad. I walk around. Then she she does it again. Like later on, she cuts me off in the kitchen. She goes, "We got a problem, bro." No, yes, yeah. dude. Like literally, this is like my experience of like really hanging out with her for the first time. That's like hilarious. this. Oh, she's and she just cuts right into conversations. We got just, a problem. Oh, she is so. <laughs> she, she, she has this charisma. In the whole oh, thing. she's got yeah. the. I mean, the whole time she was hanging out with the older teenagers. She, she, I mean, Bree and uh, Max, who are you know much older than she is. Uh, she wasn't even interested in the young kids or what anybody else was doing. She was hanging out with the teenagers the whole time. Dude, God has and, and a way of mouthing like, off to oh, them yeah. and everything. Like she's like she's so funny. That's dude. hilarious. Yeah, yeah. The other the other thing that I learned about uh, about teenagers is that their brain, because of the way it's structured, is incapable of comprehending that they may perhaps feel completely different five years from now or a year from now and how they feel now. <coughs> it's like they're all on Adderall. Yeah, dude. And yeah. how <laughs> all the confidence, and yeah. <laughs> none <laughs> of the life experience yet. And, and then, and then the other part of it that is, so they can't even, so for you to try and tell them like, uh, you know, this might be a bad decision in five years, you may, whatever, like they, they can't even process that. And then to make it worse, however they feel now is how <laughs> they think that they've always felt. So mm. she gave me an example and mm. I thought, Oh my God, this is so true. So like let's say Is that because of their their timeline? 
because it's, it's their brain structure. Right. Right. And then what I mean by that though, is like, because they've only been on earth for 15 years and only in five of that is like this, you know, young adulthood version of that, which seems like, I mean, that's one third of their no, life. It's, so it's like a lifetime to them. It's no, it's literally this Adam. And this is the part that tripped me out. Cause I thought the same thing. It's exactly what I said. I said, Oh, it's because they've only been on earth. She goes, no, their brain is literally structured different. They don't have the capability. She goes, hmm. so for example, if when you have a kid and they like a food, they love it, they eat it. And then all of a sudden you bring it out and they're like, I don't like this. And you go, what do you mean? You liked it before. No, I never liked it. You're, if you've ever had that experience, you oh, know yeah. exactly what I'm talking yeah, about. Yeah, yeah. It's, and, it's, it's, and you think that they're bullshitting you. You're like, get yeah. the hell out of here. This was like two days ago. You were eating the hell out of this. They literally believe that how they feel now is how they've always felt and yeah. how they're always going to feel. Oh, that's wild. So talk about how frustrating that is. Right? So well, the other thing that's frustrating is that, and and I know some some parents are really good about um, uh, teaching their kids to respect elders, but you don't, as at that age, and because I remember, like you can't even fathom how much value there is in talking to a 50-year-old when you're 50. You, you have zero no. idea. Yeah, you have zero concept. You think they're stupid. Of, right, you think they are. You think they're, they're old and they don't get it because all, and you don't realize like, how much wisdom you gain in a decade. I mean, just think of ourselves where we're at at 40 something years old and 50 something years old. When you go ah, look, th thinking of yourself 10 years ago, how much wisdom you gained. So different. Yeah, yeah. So different. And so if you had that perspective as a 15 year old, you'd have a whole different attitude about every time, every chance you got to speak to somebody yeah. who was 40, 50, 60 years old, because you go like, man, as smart as I think I am right now at 15, this guy or girl has, four more decades on them than me. Like, I just want to hear what they have to say, which you don't think like that I told my, at all. I told my old, oldest exactly. I said, do you know what the difference is between a, like a kid who's maybe up to like 20 something and like when you're in your like late 30s and 40s? I said, you know what the difference is? This is the big difference. Once you hit the older ages or middle age, you know you don't know. You yeah, now realize I don't know anything yep. and I'm going to know a lot more in 10 years. That's the biggest difference. But when you're that age, you think you know. Do you think it's even harder for like a kid like your son or you two who's like smarter than the average kid? Totally. Too? So it's like you're even more blinded, 100%. right? Because you already perceive yourself as like, yeah, he's talking about most people, not me. You I know have because I'm I'm well read. Yes. I know more than this. I can have co intelligent conversations yes. with thirty year olds already. So you already. I was so full of knowledge <laughs> that I thought I had all the wisdom. Yeah. That's a hundred percent. That yeah. was me for the longest. So time. That's your boy. You know yeah. when I started to realize it when I was in my late twenties. And then I would train uh, older clients and then they would start to like talk to me about certain things. And I started to realize like, oh my God, like that's some serious wisdom. I didn't know that. Wow. That's incredible. So then I really appreciated it. Yeah. But in my early twenties, I was like, oh, here comes, you know, Mrs. So-and-so and she's going to tell me the same stories and I'm going to work her out, you know, train her. And, <laughs> yeah. oh, well. I mean, too, it's, it's a big cultural thing on top because there are some cultures that do a better job with that totally. in terms of like an integrating oh, uh, old people in like, old cultures. Yeah. Yes. I think we do a terrible job of that in America, but yeah, I think if if we did pay homage and and did look up to our elders and and had them like included a lot more, it that's the other thing that you see a lot too in like these tech companies and these like they're always getting rid of like older people and like you know not not keeping them around to like balance this this um this drive that all these young people have. That I think they know everything. It's because we are a, a consumer based productivity based. Uh, culture yeah. and youth is amazing er eroding wisdom yes so youth is amazing for productivity right you can work your butt off you could produce you could be innovative because you tend to think differently right yeah. so you tend to be less set in whatever ways you just kind of like look at things differently um and you consume like you're not going to sell like try to come out with a product that you're going to sell to 60 year olds and or versus 16 year olds right like which one's going to go viral you know which there's a good there's a good yeah. movie that actually covers did you guys ever see the movie with uh i think it's sandra bullock and it's definitely robert de niro did you see that one doug i didn't so she's uh she is like a young entrepreneur who built this multi-million dollar internet company selling clothes and he is a retired ex-ceo who's bored his wife died and he has nothing to do mm -hmm. and so he's like i'll get a job for the hell of it and he applies to be like her assistant and of course there's this like oh my god this guy's a fossil he's older like uh -huh. by four times it's he's called, like breaking down i think it's every, called the called? intern yes oh uh, have you guys seen i've this? never yeah, seen yeah, it yeah. Uh, it's a good movie oh it's my actually, god i saw it a long time ago yeah it's time. actually it's actually a really it's got it's a it's not sandra bullock it's someone else huh 
Uh, Anne Hathaway. Yeah, yeah. So it, it's a, uh, it's been a long time since the I've seen one. it, but it's worth a watch if you've never <laughs> watched. Brunette. If you've never watched it, would you say the other brunette? Yeah, yeah, the other. <laughs> Bro, I'm so terrible at that. Yeah, <laughs> no. Katrina's so better about that. Like, oh, did you see? So You'll never so- forget Robert De Niro, though. Yeah, no. I, do, I do remember. Yeah. Robert De- I love all the gangster movies. That's I know, why. That's why I say. But yeah, if you haven't watched that movie, that's a. It's a especially around this conversation that we're having. It's it. A lot of that is played out in it, and it's a good comedy. Oh, it's I a- remember. So, and then the the funny thing is too with your parents when you're real little, they're gone. Then you get older, they're idiots. Yeah. Then you get older and even older and have your own kids and they're gods again. Now mm-hmm. I look to my parents like, like, oh my God, you're so like, t- like, give me advice. Like, I need to talk to you or whatever. <laughs> but when I was a teenager, you know, early 20s, like, oh, my, my old fashioned parents don't know anything. Yeah. <laughs> they don't understand anything. It's so funny. It's yeah. so funny. Speaking of which, just read an interesting study. I love your guys' uh, um, what's, what's uh, I guess, opinion on this, right? So a study come out showing that, and, and they've been already showing this. In fact, you brought up a, a book on this, to, um, Adam, a little while ago. So this is a new study. They're calling it the great decline in adolescent risky behavior. Mm. And what they're finding is that adolescent risky behaviors have declined markedly in high-income countries. This is between 1999 and 2019. So less alcohol, less smoking, less risky sex, drugs, crime. So- on, the, on those ends, adolescents seem to be doing, I don't know if you want to say better, but def, definitely less risky behavior. Mm. So I want to know what you guys' opinion is on this. We've and if effectively it's- scared the shit out of them. Right? <laughs> so <clears throat> I, it, f- first of all, the book I reference, and if you like information- iGen, right? Yes, yeah. iGen. So if you like stuff like you're, and I think it's Gene Torre or something like that, something like that is her, I think the author. If you, the whole book is just nothing but studies like this. And I, and I thought it was really, I can't remember the, the, what the, the conclusion that the author came to around this, but I believe, and I don't know if I believe that because it's what I read or it's just what uh, the conclusion I came to is that I think that it's because of how, how much n- information that a young person can gather around something. Like you could literally Google right now, mm-hmm. you know, what are my statistics if I get married before the age of 21? And it pop up how likely you are to get divorced or how easy is it for me to contract an STD if I have this many partners? Like you can Google that type of information and instantly yeah. be told. And I just think that there is a, a, a more awareness around the dangers, the yeah. pitfalls. We bombarded them with the world's problems. Yeah. Right. Like we didn't grow up with like all the pol- political problems and like, you know, what's happening overseas and like everything like around the world right now could be just popped up in their feed and they could like stress out. So that's it. my, what's so your, I, have, I have a different theory. Okay, so so I, I've been reading about think. this because this is actually something that people are, are, are talking about right now. <clears throat> and, um, I read some interesting articles and I, again, I'd love your guys' opinion on this. So the theory that I have is that it may be a side effect of some negative things that are happening with teenagers and adolescents. In other words, Kids are more lonely. They're not meeting with each other as much. They're not getting the driver's license as, as young as we used to. Yeah. They're not hanging out as much. They're staying at home more. Parents are helicopter parents more. Yes. And they're more isolated. Yeah. So so I, I can see that. So there's a good and a bad to it. So kids are more anxious. So at the same time as they're having this reduced risky behavior, they're coddled. They're also more depressed, more anxious, and more lonely. And the if you look at all the studies on this one article I read talked about like like all the growth periods of as you're growing up. And one of the things that that is like uh, a hallmark of being a teenager is going out and testing boundaries. So it's like a toddler. Toddlers do the same thing. Except toddlers' boundaries are like this. Yeah. A, a teenager's boundaries are like this. If you go out into the world and mom's not watching you, you don't have your phone connected to them. They can't watch your location. You're not at home on your computer. Isolated. You're out with your friends all the time. Like we were. Like when we went out, nobody knew what the hell we were doing. We just had to be home at a certain time. Yeah. You're going to engage in more and more of these risky behaviors, which is negative. But then the positive is you're not as depressed, not as anxious, not as lonely. Yeah. So it's this, it's like, it's almost like we think we fix one thing when in reality we cause other yeah. problems. It's so it's, it's kind of weird. Yeah, it's interesting. I was just watching, I don't know if you guys have watched this yet, but I think it's called like class action park and it's on um, HBO. 
but it, it goes over this park that's in New Jersey that was like the most dangerous like amusement park, water park that they ever made. And some guy made it like everything that was like engineered was like super fast and like sketchy. And they knew that there was risk that people were getting injured like left and right, but they fucking loved it. And they were feeding them <laughs> alcohol and kids were just talking trash to each other. Like there was this one like Tarzan swing where it's like freezing water below and like um it, it was really way too high and like people would try and do all these like crazy moves off of it they'd flash each other you know and, like <laughs> take their pants off and like what? Free, yeah it, you should does it watch it does it exist still no oh it's gone no, 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 okay no, it's no, gone no. i mean again class action park like they, they had tons of lawsuits i think oh, got uh, it, towards got the it. end That's of it okay, i didn't yeah, get, yeah. get to the end of it but it was just funny because it brought you back because it was like in that era of like the 90s where you'd see like um uh, the, um, on MTV, it was like the MTV oh, like era, spring break, where, yeah, spring shit, breakers, yeah. and like, uh, so everybody would go there, and it was like uh, they'd all get hyped about it because like there was that thrill that you could really get injured. Yeah. So I mean, I think I think everybody's right. I mean, I definitely don't think any any of the things that we speculate is is contributing to it is is not. I think they're all contributing to it. I think the bigger question would be which is contributing to it the most, right? Yeah. I mean, it's to me, it's like all those things would obviously play a it, role in that. It's like, which one is it the, could, but I think about it like the, the social stigma and fear around getting like pregnant, for example, was really strong back in the day, yeah. really uh -huh. strong back yeah. in the day. And that didn't prevent, you know, teenagers and kids from, from doing uh -huh. certain things. It was stronger than it is now. Te the teen mom show did the most. Yeah. Right? I mean, before birth control existed, like that was a real deal. Like, oh shit, you're pregnant. Well now I guess. So what? I don't, yeah. so it's not those statistics that I think that, that deters them. I think it's things like how, how less likely they are to make more money, how much more likely they are to have a divorce and have their parents. Like, I think it's the, all those things that they're, they're researching going like, Less about oh, it's risky to have a kid. This, but all the things that are attached to that. Yeah, we were talking about teenagers. You really think they're logical, bro? In they, that sense? I, I, it's not so much. It's a logical thing as much as it is a. I can Google it in two seconds and get a feedback on. Yeah, on but you it. still want to experience it. Like I don't know, man. When I was a teenager, like you could have told me how dangerous some of the shit I did was all okay, day so, long. Okay, here's the deal. You're right. But my, I was out my, there. My and parents was could have me. said that to me. But if I went and found the information for myself, I would come to my own conclusion. Totally different at fifteen. Uh, so if da maybe. if dad tells me don't have, don't get pregnant, you know, or don't get a girl pregnant at seventeen because this this and this might happen, I'm gonna go oh whatever. But if I go if I searched it on my own and it goes oh these are this and it's it's an it's an outside you know, piece of information that I'm receiving not from my parents. Hmm. I'm more likely to listen to it and maybe adhere to it. Maybe. That's, I don't know. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I hear what you're saying. I don't know. So Because with human behavior, if you pull one lever, mm -hmm. other things get affected. It's never, sure. oh, just do this thing and we're totally cool. Yeah. So what we did is we pulled the lever of- yeah, We just made them depressed and anxious instead. We, we, we did is we pulled the safety lever. Yeah. Safety, home, with me, watching you constantly. Yeah. And then we don't realize that now that that changes how they are able to develop- and the side effect may be depression, anxiety, you know, fear, that kind of shit, you know? So well, I don't know, man. It's really weird. Well, didn't like drivers, uh, people getting driver's licenses, did that go down? Yeah. Decline, right? Dude, and all kids that. don't get like, driver's sure. licenses. They talk about that too, though, right? Like, and there's actually a, a real logical reason why that is. And again, I don't think anyone's wrong here. I think all the things that yeah. you guys would speculate is contributing, but- the ability to just Uber. I mean, we have we have grown adult friends that are in their forties that don't even own cars that are millionaires because it, the access, the how easy it is to use Uber and the and the logic behind that. Oh, I don't have to pay insurance for that. I don't have a car payment for that. It yeah. comes and gets me wherever I want. I can still text and talk to people while it's that's driving. A big, that's a big one. Too. It is it's, a big one. It's to stay at home and text and get on your computer. Right. Do you so, remember when we were kids? How if you wanted to hang out with your friends but not be around them, the only way you could do it was get on the phone. But mm -hmm. the challenge was, if you're on the phone, mom or dad's gonna pick up the other line, wanna make a phone call, you're super limited. So you're yeah. at home bored as shit. Yeah. TV isn't what it, what it is now. TV, you had like so many channels and there wasn't like wall to wall entertainment. <laughs> Do you yeah. remember having the, the- You had to make plans at like a park and like you'd meet up. You Otherwise, remember having the, the, the super long 
phone cords so you could go into yeah. your room, <laughs> you your room, close the door, and then it's like attached to the kitchen. Totally. Remember three way calling? Yeah, that was yeah. a party line or whatever? Oh, yeah. Mom, I want a party line. Yeah. <laughs> <That's>, <laughs> Jeez. I know. It's pretty wild uh, stuff. Mention one of our partners right now. We haven't mentioned one of our partners. Oh, um, well, you know, let's talk about Paleo Valley because they're the chocolate bone broth that I keep telling everybody about how it tastes. Is that flying off their shell? No, it's how it's the best. Yeah, awesome. are, sure. How it's the I best like tasting protein now. I've ever had in my entire life. <laughs> everybody agrees. It is literally, I don't that, know what that's they the did to it. Feedback, huh? But it's the first protein drink of my life ever that I actually drink. I would drink because I like the taste. Yeah. You, you add it to like macadamia nut milk, almond milk, or whatever. Oh my god! Yeah. Well, it's so good. Their beef sticks kept kept me going, man. It kept me surviving when I was traveling, though. That's such a convenient thing. Cause like, dude, all you got is carbs, like carbs, carbs, carbs for like just something to pick up and grab. You know, yeah. like you never know. I didn't know what kind of like meal situation I was gonna have, so I just packed a shit. Oh, did you really? Uh, f- yeah, my uh, suitcase full of those things. That's become a staple now for Max. I told you guys that's been one of the challenges is is getting him like a, a protein source at school because they don't have a microwave and so it's like Oh, right. So like What cut, do you do? You just cut ch- it up Yeah, chop up, the, chop up the beef jerky and give it to him in a little sandwich Which bag. Which one does he eat? What flavor? Uh, he'll eat whatever I have. I mean, Not I'm the jalapeno. Lo- yeah, no, I won't give him the jalapeno. Although he will. So Max will have jalapeno. Really? Stuff. Yeah, he will. So and Katrina, I was like, you know what? Let him try. I mean, he'll find out if he doesn't like it or not. I'll have like jalapeno chips, which are really got a kick to him. And he'll see me eating them. He'll come over and he'll have a couple. But you know what? He self-regulates. So I know it's like a little spicy for yeah. him. But he hasn't like, it doesn't give him the shits. It hasn't like freaked out or cried or what like that. So but- I, I, re- I figured that's a way to keep a Rayleigh from eating what I'm eating. So if so. <laughs> <laughs> so it's spicy. A little Tabasco. No, so I, I'm too spicy. Sure. Like, like well, we get pistachios, right? And we get two bags. One's original, and these are all shelled. And the other one's like, uh, like chili, whatever flavor. Oh, yeah, yeah. So I'll pull out the chili flavor ones. He's like, Papa, can I have one? I'm like, it's spicy. And then I'll like kind of put one on his tongue, and, and that's it. Now, anytime Dude, I say something spicy, <laughs> that's such a dad hack. You have yeah. to learn like, like what the kids won't eat. You know, I start like really buying that. You know, yeah. like in bulk. <laughs> it's hilarious. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, so did you guys hear uh, that NASA? I think in I want to pull it up. I believe in 2028 <clears throat> is going to be launching a asteroid hunting. Yeah, 2028, an asteroid hunting spacecraft is going to launch in 2028. Asteroid hunting? Yes. So I mean, what is going to go and find and then shoot them and blow? Them no, up? just identify them. Oh, okay. So, so here's the challenge: asteroids that come within 30 million miles of Earth. I want those a title, dude. Are co- an asteroid hunter. <laughs> yeah, that that's an actual get a show. Wait, hold on. Yeah. I, think, I think that's an actual. I bet it comes with a cool superhero. jacket. Yeah, like you yeah. gotta have a mullet, cool patches like, on it, like blades. Yeah. <laughs> wow. yeah. So, so asteroids that come Hell within yeah. 30 million miles of Earth are called near Earth objects, and if one of them is wider than 460 feet, <clears throat> and they hit the planet, it could flatten the city. And if they get within a certain distance, uh, they've calculated that none of our current technology would be able to deflect it with enough time. So if it gets even within a certain, you know, it's far, we could blast it with our technology. It's still going to probably hit Earth. So what they're trying to do is identify as many as possible within that range so that if something does come in with that range, what we got to do have is assemble a team of the world's best drillers <laughs> and then we shoot yeah. them up into space. I think there's a movie about this. they all get on the, <laughs> on the meteor and they drill. You know, I watched this, uh, this video uh, that kind of broke down like the, the theories that people, common theories for like stopping asteroids. And they said, yeah, you got a huge asteroid headed for Earth. And if it's within a certain distance and you're like, oh, let's go blow it up with a nuke. Well, now you've just turned one rock into a 20 rocks, rocks that are going to hit Earth. It's, it's, gonna, just, it's like a shotgun blast. death. <laughs> <laughs> Good job. All right, everybody. We're totally effed. Yeah. <laughs> do you guys think that NASA would tell us if there was no? No. Like, do you think the government would no. tell us if they knew inevitably we're effed? No, I don't. <sighs> I do not. Because uh, you know why? They'd wait till like, you know, an hour before you know, or something. Why? I don't, yeah. know we do. I don't even know <laughs> if they would. I think they'd be more concerned about the, the, the chaos and the deaths from the chaos that would potentially happen if we, we knew that was happening. I don't think we would get warmed. I really don't. Do you think I, we'd I'd be, be alarmed seeing a bunch of like uh, spaceships just taking off left and right, you know, and yeah. they're not telling yeah. us. I mean, yeah. the, I guess the like, bigger question would going? be, w- would it leak out? Because I don't think they would come out and announce it, but maybe they had family members. Right, you have somebody who's working in that in that department, right? And you're sure shit not going to not tell your family, right? Mm. You're like they're like, okay, this is top secret, don't say anything. Yeah, because you're over there texting your wife, right? Top secret, we're going to get the kids back to bags. I think it depends on the estimation because if like, okay, it's going to take out a city, and we have 
two weeks, then maybe they'll tell everybody. But they're like, okay, well, the yeah. Western hemisphere of Earth is as screwed. Dude. What are we going to do? They're not going to say anything. Yeah, I don't know. It, yeah. That would suck. That would suck. <laughs> that do you would think those too. really deep bunkers that are over in like Wyoming and stuff that all those millionaires have, you think that would they would be protected? Oh, the nuke? Protector, yeah, I think they would None survive if a unless a meteor they got... slams right on them. Well, yeah. yeah, not if it hit a direct hit, yeah. but you know, there's I, or the meteor could hit Yellowstone, set off the super volcano, and now we're really that's always yeah. a potential. Sorry, Dude, I, I thought about this when I was on Iceland. It was like what? all active volcanoes, like everywhere, the whole like, place. You could just go anytime, and they're just so chill. About Is it, it like that? Yeah. Oh, I didn't yeah. know that. <laughs> but that stupid uh, show on Netflix with the where the what was it oh. called? With the <laughs> yeah, I couldn't finish it. The, with the um, it was in New Zealand. Terrifying, dude. What, what, which one it was, was that? A, it was a volcano. Oh, the, blue oh and, Katrina and was steam, watching that. That was a true story, right? Yeah, oh, steam just burned the hell out of it. You got oh. video, like there's video. I was of actually the, of nervous it. about that. Oh, oh, it was terrible. And the story, like like they're grabbing onto each other and their skins oh, like oh, ripping, oh. just flesh <laughs> off. Oh, it's oh, terrible. Oh, yeah. All right, let's change topics real quick. We got to bring up the chair bender. I showed you guys her video. <laughs> <laughs> that was a great video, Bro, man. That's old. It's an old video, apparently. I, yeah, it's, it was. It would, happened in September, but for some reason, it's going viral right now. It's made the news, and of course, everyone's talking about it. So it's getting millions of views just, now. <laughs> Bro, on Twitter, they but, were like, "Never challenge a white girl that works to a fight that works at the Waffle House." <laughs> yeah, that's a tough lady. That's, that's, a, that's a tough that's a bad bitch right there. Bro, she was. <laughs> When she grabbed that chick and she's like, you know, right cross, uppercut, 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 right. uppercut. And then the ch they call her the chair bender because she got chairs thrown at her and she literally deflected them like she was like magnetic. It, it was <laughs> hilarious. It looked like right out of a kung fu movie. Her interview afterwards. <laughs> so she did a video explaining. I, I tried to happened. watch it. It was long. I couldn't get all the way through it. It was like she talked on the on there for. She, she's yeah. exactly, as you would imagine. Like, you, like that's what you would imagine she would sound yeah, yeah. like. Oh, yeah. When she went to throw the second chair, I was sitting there going, throw the second one. Throw the second one. I'll catch it just like the fucking first. Come on, let's go. Hitting exactly. her vape pin while she's talking yes, to tell the story. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Real class. Speaking of which, uh, there's this page uh, that I follow. I'm not going to give them a shout out because I don't think it's a, I have someone else to shout out. But anyway, they show all these like fight challenges where people off the streets walk into martial arts schools yeah. or boxing gyms and challenge the just trainers the dojo and, and like, hey, oh, tough wow. guy. you got to be the dumbest person on earth. <laughs> yes. Apparently that happens uh, every now and then. It's or you're so looking dumb. to get beat up, you know? It's so dumb. Like, why would you even, why yeah, would yeah. you, there was this, I saw one this morning where it's uh, this, this dude challenged off the street, challenged a, like a uh, Kyokushin black belt in karate yeah. to a fight. And uh, I mean, <clears throat> after the first kick, you're like, uh oh, this is not going to go good. And he did like this flashy spin kick and knocked the guy completely out like why do they do that it was like a video game combo he put together yes. and then like finished him with this roundhouse to the oh, face you know, not to completely shift gears but i'm going to anyways because i was i actually uh, wanted to ask you you had sent a text over i think it was last night or maybe it was even this morning about uh layoffs again uh, and oh, yeah. I, I hadn't read that yet who is maybe it maybe pull that up amazon is oh it's amazon I, yeah amazon is uh now, they already had a big wave already didn't amazon they? and salesforce right <laughs> yeah oh salesforce too huh I think that was it. Amazon other. and Salesforce was in the text. You so. saw the you saw um, Facebook with the big fines, right? Started off the four hundred million, four hundred million European fund. Union. Wow. Because now, what was it about? Because they were using they some were, privacy, some privacy fines. They were it doing was based off of like people's time using. Uh, what was it, like the, the amount of time they were like like scrolling, and so like they pinpointed. Um, mm -hmm. when to like target them with ads. Yeah, uh, Amazon will lay off more than eighteen thousand workers. Wow. 18,000. At what percentage? I mean, it doesn't matter what percentage. It's a lot of workers. Yeah. That's a lot. And then sales, There's a lot in Amazon, though. That's and it. Salesforce is cutting 10% of the workforce. So this is like, you know, we're starting to see the beginning. Of, yeah, it is the beginning. It's the very beginning. It's just going to get worse. No, everybody, everybody, I mean, about six months ago, there was denial from, I don't know, say 50% of the economists that we are heading into yeah. a, a, a nasty recession. Now it's a hundred percent. I mean, most people that you know, it's inevitable. I mean, we will technically we were already, we're already in one, yeah. <laughs> technically, but we've changed that definition. So they're gonna change oh, it right, again. Yeah, <laughs> you think they'll change it? Go again. back to Webster, you know, <laughs> rewrite a definition. Oh, they'll just change the name. You know, this is a slow growth phase. Oh wow, God, they have one point four million. How weird would that be? Just think about it for a second. Imagine how bad we think we are already with like being able to 
spend time with all of our employees. Like we we openly admit that we are we, we need to be better about that. We're not good at it. And yeah, we, we have, have one point four million. Yeah, we have like we have like twenty <laughs> employees. <laughs> one point four. You like you'll never meet That's half chaos. of us. No, impossible. Yeah. Ever. No. That's so crazy to think that. Right? You know what suck about that is uh, imagine running a company <laughs> like that and then finding out that a huge segment of your hate you or something force, well or just was treated like shit or something happened yeah and you're like oh. you weren't even aware but you know it's on you right because uh. you run the company but you had no idea did that any of you li- speaking yeah, of that did any of you me. listen to that interview i saw joe rogan posting about who is like a guy who goes in there and like looks at the conditions of like a lot of these oh no i didn't what was it oh i, I didn't watch know, it you know the name of oh the you guys wa- um maybe pull up his instagram because he posted it saying that like about this- the conditions of what like am like he was he was this guy like this is what he does he goes in and investigates big companies like Amazon about the work conditions oh. the pay all those things like that uh-huh. and you know it, it, Joe posted about it maybe a week ago saying that it was like one of the more enlightening conversations he's ever had so I just thought I mean you guys are bigger Joe Rogan listeners than I am I thought for sure you would have listened to it already yeah I was listening to one it was on my list to actually ask you about because I thought oh Justin will have listened I'll to probably this. listen to it next oh there's his name I'll right there to a different Siddharth one. Kara <clears throat> is that it Doug. Oh, I don't oh, know. That's Andrew. Andrew that's Andrew. That Andrew. Thank yeah, you, Andrew. So Darth Kara was the guy he interviewed. You, you know what episode? Does it say the episode cool. number on there? Or uh, 1914. Okay. Now, I I'll do. Is this out. the same guy? He's at 1914? Clip. We passed Joe? Yeah, we passed Joe. Oh, wow. Yeah. We, a few wow. less listeners, but yeah. we passed him. It's hard to I wish, we could pass, I wish we could pass his, his income. Yeah. That would be. <laughs> <laughs> we got yeah, 5 more yeah, thousand episodes to be as good as he was five years ago. Um. Is this the same guy that was talking about the the lithium mines? And, That's a different guy. Okay. Did you see that one? I saw clips. I didn't see the whole so thing. So he was talking about how these companies are like, oh, yeah, we don't have any humans mining uh, this stuff. This is all done by machines. And he went in there with oh, a hidden camera. Same guy, I think. It it's is? It's called Cobalt Red. That's it. Cobalt how the mines. blood of the Congo powers our lives. That's the one. Oh, camera. so it is the same guy. It so is. That's the interview. It's Cobalt. That's what it was, not lithium. So he, he went in and with a hidden camera took pictures. And this is like, and they're not supposed to be using humans oh, to mine. Oh, that's the one where it's like just littered with people just digging? Yes. Oh my God, and he's like, I did see that. This is what's actually happening. Dude. That's fucked up. That is fucked. Yeah, yeah I mean, I thought for sure you guys had listened to it, so I'll have to go listen to it then. I'll check it out. I mean, I've, you know, being completely honest, I don't think I've ever listened to an entire Joe Rogan episode. It's, a, it's three hours, uh, that's why. Isn't that crazy? They're long. They are. But I mean, I, I, I mean, I obviously- continue it on the drive back. Is that right. what you do? Yeah. Yeah, I just... So you come here and then go back and then you're almost done. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, wow. Did you guys see... Boy, this is terrible. Uh, <laughs> I, I mean, I guess it's good marketing for Tesla, but it's a terrible situation. Did you guys hear what happened with that, that, that guy that tried to kill himself and his family in the Tesla? That was here. Was it? That was by Justin. No. You didn't was hear? It? Yes. I didn't even know the no location. No way. It yeah. was? Yes. That was a crazy story, though. Right? Wasn't it, wasn't it over here, Andrew? Yeah, Gio was talking about it yesterday at work. Here, I pull and he said it was, it was it start on, out as like a, it was on 17, I think. Pasadena. Uh, uh, oh, it was Pasadena. Pasadena. Oh, I thought it was. So over he here. took yeah. trip off this, right? He he's got he's in his car with his wife. It's a doctor. Him, his wife, and two kids. He drives the Tesla off a 250 foot cliff. And lives. Everybody survived. Everybody's and now he's that is amazing. And now he's being charged, right? Of course. Wow. Yeah. I can't All believe of them they survive. survive. Yes. That's so that's incredible. why I said it's like uh, bad. You know, I guess it's. Bro, bad I just. Bad. I mean, well, they try. It wasn't it initially the the news came out, and then it was like like trying to use that as like kind of blasting Tesla and like making them look bad. And why would it blast it, Tesla? Why no? They survive now that they survive. <laughs> right? it's, it's a big, I don't like, think. They, yeah. Our cars are so safe. <laughs> well, I, I yeah, there's, that's a, like there's a special place a in hell for somebody for like that, dude. I think that's just a that's awful. Terrible. Did you guys see the yeah. the new law that just got passed in Tennessee? What? You guys just reminded me of this. Oh, did, did you see yeah. this uh-huh. about? Uh, okay, so if, if you, you're a drunk driver, that's right. If, if a drunk driver kills somebody and that person is a parent, a parent. you are now liable for child, child support. support. Oh, I yeah. agree with that. I totally. know. Same I thought I that was that. like. What a what a what a cool law. I mean, I like shitty that. situation, but I mean, what a what a what a way to. I mean, because you don't. No one ever. I mean, I never but thought of so it like that. There's so much you take away, you know, from yeah. from families. Hundred like percent. Yeah. Now the only problem with that is, um, you're gonna how what use is it? Because you're gonna go to jail. You ain't gonna earn shit. So how would you be able to? You will when you get out, I guess. Yeah. Unless I guess you have money. Maybe if you already have money, then they. You, you'll, well, how long do you normally go to? Good. How what is, How long does someone actually go to jail? I though? think it's considered murder if it, you're if you're intoxicated and you crash into someone yeah, and you kill them. Yeah. 
So I think you go for a little while. Yep. Hey, look that up, Doug, because I bet you something like that. Because I think they still get away with it being it's not intentional. So I don't. No, and I don't like know the, the the levels of you know first degree, second, second degree, degree or, yeah, manslaughter. Like I don't know, like how I think what, it's man, vehicular and then you know that you, whatever they get sentenced, they could easily get out in fifty, you know, fifty percent less time if they're on good yeah. behavior and do stuff like that. So I bet you they're not in there as long as you think they are. Well, or something I mean, like I, something I, that's you know, quote unquote, accidental. If it's your first time, yes, it might be a few years. It's like ten years, uh, or maybe for one of my friends that happened to. So. Okay, so well, in ten, California, yeah. it's four, six, or ten years. Okay, wow. so ten at the most, and well, you because he killed multiple. people. So you could end up serving five, bro. So you're back making money within five years. Yeah, but but now you're in jail. You're a felon. You come out. The kid is already now older, maybe an adult. So do you still pay him? Like you know what I mean? Like I wonder how useful. Pro it, it would be useful if you already had money, I guess. If you already had money, and then they could take some and give it to the kid. I mean, yeah, obviously it would be more useful, but I mean, I still think it's a it's a it's a good law. So do I. Yeah, I mean, I think it's it's just one more thing that's going to yeah deter you from doing totally something agree like that. So agree with it. All right, so we're we're supposed to mention uh, LMNT. I want to say this: this is uh, uh, to moms out there who are breastfeeding, very valuable for breastfeeding moms. Very valuable. Uh, I remember when um, they recommended it to us when uh, Jessica was breastfeeding. Aurelius to improve, increase her milk production. It made a big difference. And now she's using it. It made, a, a, bit with it made a huge difference for us too. Yeah. Yeah. It was like, like Katrina, I remember when she first started doing it, she was like, Oh my God. She, like she could feel, she yeah. could feel the difference instantly by increasing it. But I mean, it's a, that's a significant amount that you're, you're bumping up. So if yeah. you're, if you're at all deprived in that area and I know it's the sodium, the sodium helps you retain more water so that you now can produce more which is oh, that the same it thing? It hydrates that, you better. So the old, the old like hacks is like, I've, like even like beer, like the wheat in beer is supposed to help help that. Like, yeah, I, know I think that that there's, that, there's, yeah. there's they make they make these uh, like lactating crackers or something like they call them. I forget what they're called. Or yeah, there, there's product. There's compounds it's my called snack. I think they call yeah. galactagogs. Uh, <laughs> but I mean, okay. So my question, my, my question, Sal. I like my, crackers, mm -hmm. my question, Sal, is is. Is it the same thing that's in those that really caught, that are getting the same benefits that the, no. oh, it's different. Yeah. So, um, so there's if multiple you, factors. Yeah. But. So if you talk to like a lactation specialist, they'll say, if you're not producing enough milk, step one, two, and three is to drink more water. That by far will make the biggest difference. Then, then you can look at things like, uh, galacticogs, which are, um, compounds that can increase milk production and they make those like, is that real or is that a Star Wars sounds character? Sounds like Transformers. No. I think it's a Star Wars I know, it sounds exactly like things. <laughs> Now you can He's look making like words up just to test us. No, right Galactic yeah, Defenders Galactic. of the Universe. <laughs> <laughs> we, what what movie was that? Was it uh, the Troopers, the Super Troopers, where they like th insert the word, the or the meow, like the yeah. cat when he's like, we should do stuff like that to each other. <laughs> no, it's real. Watch. Yeah. It Let's, is a galactagog, oh, a wow. substance that increases milk supply. There it is. Well, look at you guys. Uh, I remember the most random. Today. It's so funny because I have the perfect the memory for a podcast. Transformer this was it's a useful, it's a useless memory in real life. Podcasting so useful, yeah. brilliant. Yeah. Let's. I want to give a shout out to um, humanprogress.org. This is a website that posts like breakthroughs and good news. And basically, it's a great way to offset all the negative crap that's out there. So when you go on there, you can read how you know less people are illiterate than ever before. More people are fed. We've eradicated this disease. We've come closer to a cure for cancer. It'll it'll it posts all these breakthroughs in science, economics, in education. It's a great positive website, and it's all uh, data driven. Remember, so it's dot real, real this, positive. This news. is actually. I'm glad you used uh, shared this one because this is one I've multiple times when I've got like a negative Nancy friend or somebody who's always referencing like negative yeah. bad news. I'm just like. Bro, or doom and gloom, right? I'm like, go what, look at this. And I always forget it's .org and not a .com. So humanprogress.org is the, is the website. Hey, what's up, everybody? You got to check out Organifi. They make organic plant-based supplements for performance, health, and wellness. One of my favorite products is Peak Power. This is effectively a pre-workout supplement that doesn't make you feel like car garbage or crap. You actually get this smooth, euphoric feeling. So it's got caffeine but it also has other ingredients, botanical plant-based ingredients that balance it out to make it longer lasting, to make you feel good, to not give you anxiety, not hurt your stomach. It feels incredible. It's one of my favorite products of theirs. They have lots of other stuff though to check out. So go to their site and get a discount with our code. Go to Organifi.com. That's O-R-G-A-N-I-F-I.com forward slash mind pump. Then use the code mind pump for 20% off. All right, here comes the show. Our first caller is Marvin from Delaware. Marvin, what's happening? How can we help you? 
Um, wow. Uh, nothing much guys. Uh, just, this is, I'm, I don't know why I'm like fanboying right now. This is pretty awesome to be talking to you guys. Um, so thank you for having me on. Um, just a real quick background. Uh, just in the military for about seven years, uh, been working out off and on for about 10 years, but probably the last two years have been kind of serious. Uh, I found you guys in about June of last year, um, and started to really take control of my life, uh, because of you guys. Uh, so I thank you guys for that. Um, but straight into my question. Um, so I'm someone who I'm 5'11, I'm about 245 right now. And I decided because of you guys to reverse diet all the way up to like 4,000, 4,200 calories. And uh, shit, that was kind of hard to be honest. Uh, I did that for like four months and I actually saw great results. I got hella strong. Um, I was doing power lift at the time. Um, but my main question kind of focuses on the, the cutting aspect. So in the last phase of power lift, I would, I, I was about three weeks into a cut and this was, this was the time, the last phase, as people know, or if you don't know, um, you, you know, you kind of go for your maxes almost 90% at least. And I was way stronger than I anticipated when I was doing it, I was, I had never benched 315 in my life and boom, I did it. Um, hit about 520 on deadlift and about four, 425 on squat. So like I was hella strong. Um, but my question mainly is around the, the whole cutting and the strength part, because in the past I've, I've cut before. Well, I didn't cut correctly before. I was I was definitely a person who went kind of extreme um, before, and I I would feel like complete shit. I was super weak, and I I honestly didn't know what I was doing back then. But uh, yeah, this time around, I was it was crazy. I felt I still felt like the effects of the cut, like as far as like oh man, I'm feeling kind of hungry and uh, feeling a little sluggish. But when I was in the gym, I was like. I felt like a fucking beast and I, I just kind of just more curious to anything as to, to why. <laughs> yeah, that's a Bro, this is uh we're going to have to clip this for a commercial because the, I mean, this is a perfect example of when you do it right. I mean, you actually got to see strength gains even in a cut, which is incredible, but that's just a testament of you putting the work in of doing it right, getting your calories up, to a very healthy place for where you're at, building some really good muscle. And that just goes to show, I, I mean, had you stayed in a, in a bulk, you probably would have PR'd yeah. even harder. That's what I was going to say. Yeah. You, you hit PRs in spite of the cut because of the reverse diet leading up to it. And good programming. You, and very good programming. Good workout programming makes a tremendous, tremendous, I mean, you could go into bulk and have bad workout programming and get weak, you know? So this is not uncommon when things are done right. Plus the cut you were in was only three weeks. Um, so with good workout programming and you had a good reverse diet, I mean, you're still going to see strength gains uh, many times in a cut, especially in the beginning stages of a cut. Now, if you were on a cut for 12 weeks or longer, then I would I would suspect that you wouldn't see strength gains. But uh, to Abba's point, had you stayed in the bulk, you would hit more or higher numbers than you did um, in the cut. So the fact that you hit those numbers in a cut, it just goes, it's a testament to the workout programming, really. It's, yeah. and, and the fact that you did a And the reverse dieting. Yeah. I mean, that you did a great mm -hmm. job. I mean, I think that uh, that's the takeaway here is like, fuck yeah, bro. Like, this is this is what you want to see. Party this on. Is, this, is a, this is a great, and then, I mean, I would run the cut for a while, and then I'd go back to kind of a, a mini bulk. And it, depending on what your goals are, so if you're more strength focused mm -hmm. i would run a smaller cut get back in the bulk and then and keep pushing the strength if you want to lean out right now and that's more of a focus then i'd cut for a while interrupt it with a, a little mini bulk and then go back to the cut um but it, i mean where what you're feeling and where you're at right now is a testament of training properly and eating properly mm -hmm. and that's it's awesome dude i mean it's a great place to be totally oh no i appreciate it guys like i mean truly i know i said thank you in the beginning but like um, I was, I was one of those guys who was, uh, who was always afraid of the scale going up and, uh, like 
basically I was just afraid of being fat. Um, if I'm just being straightforward. Um, and because of you guys, uh, I decided to like take a chance per se or whatever, and, uh, just start increasing my calories. And, uh, yeah, the, not only the difference in the gym, but, uh, just the, the, my role as a husband and, uh, everything, like I felt like I was just more present and everything feeding myself and actually doing it all right. So I really attest like a lot of that to you guys and I, I couldn't be more appreciative. So, awesome. yeah. That's so yeah, you guys are awesome. Yeah, it's great. Now, now you're in a cut and you're probably eating something close to 3000 calories, which is, <laughs> which is amazing. Yeah. Yeah. I'm currently, uh, because of you guys also, I'm, I'm in like this week, I'm like in a mini, like a mini bulk, mini main maintenance stage, I guess, because, uh, yeah, I've been in it for like about probably five, four or five weeks. And I thought like, oh, well, this is kind of, this is kind of sucking a little bit. I know it's all, I know it's 3000, which is still kind of nice, but it's still kind of sucked and I wanted to eat more. <laughs> so, uh, I said, uh, yeah, I'm just going to take this one week off to kind of eat a little bit more and kind of throw my body a little curveball um, to, to keep it going, but then jump back into it. But, uh, love that. You do yeah. It. You guys are appreciate it guys. You're doing truly. it the right way, trusting the process and uh, you're going to get to, you're going to get to your goals. And you're going to feel good while you're doing it. So good yeah, job. Mark, I'm going to have, I'm going to have Doug, uh, you're not in our private forum, are you? <laughs> um, so uh, to, to, um, to be on, yes, I am. Oh, okay. But to be honest, I have, uh, I have slaved away a lot of money at you guys already. I have, uh, I'm in the forum. I have, probably five or six programs. Uh, what, so what don't you I'm have? not, you know, <laughs> if you guys do like hand me something or I'm, I'll be grateful, but truly I just wanted to like, just get, gain some knowledge and just, just talk to you guys. So, That's um, awesome. Well, yeah, man. I'm I'm all in there. Marvin, <laughs> I'm, I'm like a big fanboy. boy. <laughs> Marvin, pick a program. You don't have, yeah, man, I'm going to send you something. something. Let's go. What, what, um, what don't you have? I'll send it to you. I mean, it's so funny. You guys always talk about like anabolic and like, um, soon, like less volume will eventually be better depending on where you are. So that's the only one I don't have, I think oh. is anabolic. Wow. Well, <laughs> yeah. we'll send it right over to you. We'll send it over there I and, appreciate and, it, guys. And, and make sure you keep us posted, uh, in the forum, right? Man, we were in there on a regular basis. So tag us and, uh, keep us posted on your, on your journey, dude. Cause I love, I love hearing stuff like this. It's so awesome to hear where you're at and you're doing great, man. Appreciate it, guys. You, you guys it. are awesome. Thank All you right, so man. much. Thank you, man. I mean, that's uh, that's that's what happens when everyone <laughs> you do everything right. right. I know. You yeah. know, trust in the, the process. I've had that happen where I've gone into a cut in the first couple of weeks. I still hit some PRs after about five six weeks. Obviously, it doesn't tend to happen, but it's yeah. like that's when I know, like, oh, this is this is everything I'm doing, everything right. Well, really feeding his body, you know, for that and leading up to it and leading up to it, that, that had to make a well, big it's impact. Yeah, it's an example of when somebody, even with some experience is off on their programming and is off on their nutrition. Yeah. And then you align both of them at the same time and you get to see something awesome like that. It's like, he, he said it right away. In my in the past, I cut way too hard. He was starving his, his body in the past. I don't know exactly what his programming, Well, we're going to assume it wasn't as dialed as probably the MAPS programming is. And so programming off a tiny bit, also starving yourself nutritionally and some of that, you feed yourself properly, get in some solid programming. And guess what? Even in a cut, when you should be seeing a decline in strength, he still saw strength increase, which yep. is awesome, man. Our next caller is Aaron from California. Aaron, what's happening? How can we help you? Hey, guys. How's it going today? Good. Good, man. Good. I uh, just wanted to say, uh, you know, I, I'll, as always, I appreciate all the information you guys put out there. And uh, I'm about a month behind on um, on the podcast right now on Spotify. And so literally just yesterday, uh, Sal, you announced, you, uh, announced your baby daughter. So congratulations yeah. on that. That's Thank amazing. You. Oh, you still haven't, you haven't caught up to Justin's sex chains then, have you? Yeah. It's, yeah. That's, that's a whole process. <laughs> not quite, not quite. Yeah, looking, yeah. looking forward to that one. Yeah. Yeah. It's coming up. <laughs> Just happens. <laughs> still healing. Um, so yeah, my main question here is, uh, you know, everybody has a super busy schedule. I wake up at five thirty in the morning to, to work out. And, uh, from, you know, kind of the minute I wake up until I get home at, you know, five thirty, and then, uh, uh, make dinner and, and hang out with the wife and the daughter and everything. I, I you know, I'm busy from five 30 in the morning to eight, eight 15 at night. Um, and so my main question for you is with only about 45 minutes or so to work out in the morning. Um, I, I hear you guys always talk about sleep and, uh, and priming. And so I'm wondering if I should kind of wake up a little earlier and, and, 
try to prime before my workout, if that would be more beneficial for me, or if the sleep that I'm getting, you know, is kind of more beneficial for me at that point as well. I have two, I have two alternatives for you, two solutions. One, if it's an either or, and that's it, that's the only like the options we have. Sleep is more sleep. important. Yeah. Sleep okay. can be more important. That being said, um, you can actually get some of the benefits of priming the day before. So you could actually that night when you put your kids down or whatever, do 10 to 15 minutes of mobility priming and you'll still get the, you'll still get some benefits to your ability to connect to muscles. There, and there's also point. another alternative. Um, and I honestly would actually put this back on you as a client. I'd say, I'd ask you, I said, well, Aaron, what's, what's more important to you right now? Like, um, so if you came to me and you were complaining about joint pain a lot and my low back is bothering me and a lot of things that I know are, are, are crippling you are your lack of mobility and addressing priming and addressing mobility exercises. And I, I'm, I'm hearing that from you. I'm going to throw you on a program like MAPS 15, and I'm going to add 20 to 30 minutes of programming of, of mobility work in there instead. But if you come to me and you're like, Adam, I feel pretty good, but I know you guys talk about the benefits of priming and I want to get the benefits of that. I might go, well, it's, if you're not noticing anything that's, that's hindering you and you're getting great workouts, I would prioritize sleep and I'm not going to be so worried about you missing some of your priming sessions. So it really depends on how you feel at that time. And that doesn't mean that you can't weave in, in, in and out of it. So let's say, because I have this, I have weeks where I, I do feel, oh, low back is tight and my shoulders are bothering me and I just really haven't been addressing mobility. That's where I might transition to kind of a MAPS 15 routine but I and do 20, 30 minutes of mobility work because I know my body needs it. It's talking to me. And there might be other times where I've been, I'm squatting deep. I've got good mobility. I don't feel stiff. I feel good. And so I'm, I'm priming and doing mobility work less and I'm focused more on driving strength. And so there's, even though we, we create these programs with this rigidity of like, oh, follow it to a T, here's where the flexibility of kind of having all of them and how I would mold and change them based off my client and their feedback. What? Um, yes. That's, go ahead. Oh, so it's definitely the latter of the two that you just kind of laid out there. I have pretty good mobility as it is. I don't really have much pain when I'm, when I'm lifting or on a daily basis. Uh, I just kind of thought that I never really focus on that. Uh, I never focus on mobility and honestly, like just being so busy throughout the days and the weeks, it's tough. I, I followed uh, anabolic and um, performance, and it's just tough to get those trigger days, those mobility days in uh, on, you know, basically every day. So I just never really have done that. Um, so yeah, just wanted to kind of add it in and, and see what benefits I could get on, on kind of the strength level there. Cause that's really, really my focus. I, I do really want to get is, stronger. Yeah. This is where I, I would like to recommend map symmetry in terms of like how it like specifically addresses any kind of underlying issue uh, in terms of mobility. It really strengthens uh, a lot of uh, support around the joints, uh, just naturally going through this unilateral training. And also it has kind of built in workouts where you're, where you're doing isometrics and you're doing types of mobility that, um, you know, you're going to be able to kind of go through that entire program, get to the end to where we do like a five by five and see what kind of result that produces at the end. So I, I love that. And by the way, what you just gave me as feedback would also change how I recommend too. So because you said that it's something you've never really focused on, I might, as your, if I was your trainer go, Hey, let's, let's actually scale back to map 15 and put a lot of emphasis on mobility. So since, since I'm limited with time, right? So you're telling me I've got this much time to work with in the morning. I might scale your weight training back and I might increase the amount of mobility just so I could show you how you might feel if you were actually consistent with it for say, you know, three or four weeks and then hear back from you like, Hey, what do you notice? Cause what you may notice is you scale back on the weight training, increase the mobility and you got stronger and you feel better and you go, Oh shit, bro. I didn't know I was missing. Or maybe you don't, maybe you feel eh, a little bit better mobility wise. Maybe you feel a little bit better, but you don't feel much stronger and you liked training more than you liked the mobility side. But because you've told me that ah, I've never really been consistent with it. I actually, as your coach or trainer, might go, I want to make you do that for a while. Or I might make you do what Justin said, which take you through a program, which it's programmed in there. So I can then show you the benefits of, hey, if you actually incorporated this a little more, even though you think you're fine or you don't really need it that much, look at how much it's benefiting you and let you see the difference. And so- Yeah, there's nothing wrong with experimenting just to see you know how your body reacts and how you feel. Yeah, honestly, both of what you guys said uh, kind of makes sense there. And, and I'll, I'll take that advice for sure. But um, you know, Adam, to your point, the 15 minutes of working out, I, I've been an athlete all my life, the 15 minutes of working out and then spending the rest of the time on mobility. And I always hear you guys talk about it with, with, you know, 
people on that. It's just a, it's tough to do, you know, it's a tough mindset to get yourself into, to, to only, you know, lift mm. heavy, lift, Sounds you know, like the, the weights there for the 15 the minutes. Which by the way, yeah. Aaron, which by the way, Aaron, I know you've probably heard me say it is normally what we need to do. You know, the yeah. stuff that we are most resistant to, or we tend not to want to do tends to be the things that our body needs the most. And so for that reason, you know, if I was coaching you, I would at least make you go through a small period of time to just see, because I could be completely off. I could make you do that, and you come back, and you go like, Adam. Three weeks won't hurt. Right. You know? Yeah, Adam, I don't like it. Because th that matters too, right? Even if you felt a little bit better, but you don't like it, and you hate it, and you're not going to stick with it, I also wouldn't force you as a coach. But I would go, hey, give me three weeks, man. Give me three weeks of like – doing what I'm telling you to do, even though you kind of don't like it. And then give me the feedback on your strength, on your energy, how you feel, all those things. And if you see all positive benefits, then you're probably going to sell yourself on the idea of doing more of it. If you're kind of like, Meh. I don't really care. I don't really know speak of difference. I miss my hard hour training session. I'm not going to force you to do that. I'm going to say, hey, man, I, your consistency is more important to me than me telling you you need to do a little bit more ability. But I would at least want you to experiment with you and at least get you to, to to go towards that thing that you're probably resistant to just to see if you're you're missing something you don't realize you're missing. Cool. I can yeah, I can totally give that a shot. And uh and Justin, what you had said about symmetry, that I, I really like that as well because uh, you know, I was always doing I've worked out for a long time now and I have done squats and, and deadlifts and you know, all the main lifts there. And uh after starting year as program after doing anabolic and performance, I have already with just those programs noticed uh, kind of surrounding muscles and supporting muscles getting stronger. And I used to hurt my shoulder a lot and it's been relatively uh, a solid recently since doing those workouts. So awesome. hearing that you're saying that symmetry is even more so that is, exactly. is very intriguing. I, I think I'll definitely, I'll try both of them. I'll, I'll, I'll give yours a, mo a month shot in the 15 uh, minute workouts. And then maybe I'll head to symmetry after that. We'll, we'll, we'll send symmetry over to you. So you got that. So Doug, we'll send awesome. it on. Thank you. Man. you. Appreciate it. You got it, man. All right, Aaron. In. Keep it up, man. All right, guys, take it easy. No problem. Yeah, usually the either or questions have another option, right? It doesn't always, it doesn't have to be either or. But if it's either or, the answer I would say would be sleep for most people. Yeah. Uh, but in his particular case, I mean, we had lots of different opportunities for him to try and see. Because what, what's it going to hurt? Three weeks of, of testing out, training less, doing more mobility. Worst case scenario, you come out of it and go, yeah, hey, it wasn't worth it for me. Yeah. But I think it would be. I, I think mean, he would do it and he'd be like, wow. I, I love think. questions like this because it allows us to keep asking more and like find what the root of it is. Right. And my answer ch would started to change as I heard more information right. from him and realized like, Oh, okay. So you have this athletic background. You love to get after it. You only have a small window. You hear us talk about the benefits of mobility, but then you realize you're going to have to sacrifice some of that totally. hard training. Probably you love. feels like it's a waste of time. Yeah. You know, that's definitely a psychological barrier totally. to overcome. Totally. And you know, again, I would only make him do that for a short a, a short enough period of time that he I'm not forcing him to be consistent with it for a long time that we can at least measure how you feel from it. And if I if I can't sell you on it in that three to four weeks on how it's improving your life and improving your performance, then fine. Then, fine. Yeah. then go back to how you're doing because at the end of the day, the consistency is you consistently training the way you've been training is better than you inconsistently training the way I want you to train just because I think you need more mobility in your life. So, But I at least would want to show you that because more often than not, someone does that and they go, oh my God, yeah. I'm doing less lifting. And then and they I'm, value it. Yeah, I see more results and I feel better and my squat's better and my deadlift's better and I'm stronger. And then they go like, oh shit, that's what I was missing. And so I'd at least want him to experiment with that. Next caller is Micah from Indiana. What up, Micah? How's it going? Hey guys, how you doing? We're good. Dude. Amazing. All right, good to hear. So I'll go ahead and give you a little bit of backstory here and give you some context. So Last year, I did a whole lot of just split training before I found the show. And then I heard you guys talking about full body training. And so you sold me on that idea. And I went ahead, got anabolic, uh, eight weeks in, absolutely love it. I started doing the muscle pump and that's not, it's not too much of a problem because I've done like 15 reps before, but what I found was the 30 second rest breaks were absolutely killing me. I mean, uh, I've, I've come from, you know, doing one minute to all the way up to three minute rest breaks, just talking to people, you know, like more powerlifting style stuff. And so for me, like 30 seconds, 
just doesn't feel like I can fully recover before the next set. So what I'm wondering is, should I just really focus on like dropping the weight, like way below what I, what I'm used to doing, or is it worth doubling the rest periods to kind of focus on adding more weight? No, oh, first option. Yeah. yeah. Reduce the intensity and go lighter. Reduce the weight. Yeah. Cause the point of that phase is uh, strength stamina is the pump. You're going to have to go way lighter than you think. You could, you could also incorporate cardio to help you with this too. So a lot of times this happens when I, I mean, when I fall off and I haven't been training consistently any sort of cardio at all, and then I go to short rest periods and I'm like gassed yeah. and that's because I have no cardio endurance at all. So you could, you could one lighten the load up and stick with it and then allow your body to adapt and get good at it. It will, it'll eventually catch up or you could start to introduce some days or some bouts of in, uh, cardio, like hit training in there and watch how that benefits your sets. You'll see that you'll get better at those sets just because you've started to incorporate some. That's the drawback of never doing any cardio. Then, And this is also why we're not anti-cardio. I mean, here's an example of where I would recommend somebody add some cardio in there if you don't want to have to reduce I can weight. totally relate to this too, by the way. Like, this is one of those where I started working with Adam actually and like was taking me through some of these like hypertrophy style workouts with like cutting the rest periods and it was an ego check because you know I just want to lift heavy weights and and to reduce it down I had to go pretty substantially lower than I thought I could do uh, within that rep range and then breaking that up with like a shorter rest period so uh, it is one of those transitional things like you'll get better at it the more you practice it but if you haven't been incorporating that style of training the whole intent is uh, based around that so stick with that yeah when I do face like a phase three style like this the first week is terrible. It's by the end of the second week, I start to feel like I'm getting it a little bit. But just to give an example, let's say at the end of phase two, I'm doing sets of squats uh, for 10 reps with 315. And then I go into phase three where I'm doing sets of 15 and there's 30 second rests. I'm down to like 155, like half, like half the weight that I normally would. And the first set doesn't feel that hard. The second set, oh my gosh, this is getting really hard. By the third set, I'm like, oh crap, like this, I think I'm going to pass out. So, so that's what you got to consider that when you do your sets that I got to be able to do this the third, the third time as, uh, as well. Cause the first set will feel kind of easy with the amount of weight that you're, that you should be using that's appropriate for this style of training. So you got to go much lighter than you are now. Otherwise you're going to find that you just can't get through it. Okay. Awesome. And, uh, since I'm not used to that style of training, would you suggest, uh, maybe doing more like four or five weeks instead of just the three weeks of the phase three? You that's, can. Not that's not bad. Yeah. That's not a bad decision at all. You can, okay. I, yeah. I never do because I hate it. <laughs> <laughs> I like it yeah, yeah, <laughs> to that same. point though. I like that. I mean, I like that attitude of recognizing that, man, I'm like really bad at this. I haven't mm -hmm. done this. I don't do this enough. Yeah. Therefore I'm going to make myself stick in this a week or two longer than it's asking me to. So I do get good at I like that. That's a yeah, good attitude mentality. versus what most people do, which is I'm going to spend an extra week or two in the shit that I'm good at and that they do a lot of, which yep. get they get less benefits from That's where me. you'll get more benefits from sticking in the stuff that you don't like and that you're not good at. So I, I love that attitude and yeah, I would right. totally encourage that. But it's that. gnarly. It's a gnarly feeling. It's, it's the, it's the, I'd much rather lift a weight that I feel like is going to crush me than do reps where I feel like I'm going to pass out. You know, it's just, it, it, oh, it, it, does, sure. suck. Yeah. Yeah, it does suck. It's hard. Same here. <laughs> Well, good deal, man. Do you have any other questions? Uh, no, nah, just uh, just wanted to say too. Appreciate all the stuff that you guys talk about, especially you know the kind of bringing awareness to the mental health and spiritual aspects of working out and how that all bridges together. That's something that I think a lot of people should talk about more. So it's really awesome. Excellent, I appreciate that. Let me send you a program. Do you have mass performance? Uh, yeah, uh, performance and aesthetic. Oh yeah, so you have the the RGB bundle. All right, then we'll send yeah. you map symmetry. I think that'll be the next one that you can get some value from. Okay. Yeah, sure. Thanks. No problem, Micah. Thanks for calling in. Yep. See you guys. The, the, the switch from high reps, low rest period to heavy weight and low and a long rest period. I love that. Yeah. The switch from heavy 
weights, long rest periods to short rest periods and high reps sucks. Well, you yeah. know why that is, brutal. though. Because it's just we're, so brutal. Well, none of us are endurance guys. None of no. us are, you know, if you were an endurance guy and a cardio guy, sure. it would be the opposite. Don't love that. Yeah. Yeah. You love that because it's your, that's, which, by the way, I love the kid's attitude. Oh, yeah, I love the idea attitude. that he recognizes he sucks at it uh-huh. and yeah. because of that thinks he should stay in there another week or two, which is the opposite of what the average person would do. The average person would be like, fuck this. Yeah. I'm out of this. Oh, I did the three weeks. I'm out. Yeah. Get yeah, me I back know. to the stuff I really like or cutting it short going like oh they only do two weeks of it then they move back to what they love to do which is a a very common habit of people that train themselves and you know his attitude he'll get more benefits the more Uh, he practices the better he'll get absolutely totally our next caller is sebastian from nova scotia sebastian what's happening man how can we help you not much how are you guys i'm doing great what a cute baby (laughs) yes i tried to make her happy sitting down but she wants to be part of this so uh, no problem <laughs> all right yeah so uh yeah first of all i want to say congrats to you sal on uh delilah Thank she's you. Uh, absolutely beautiful it's and, dollar, uh, but that's all right <laughs> <laughs> yeah i've been following you guys for quite some time and uh really appreciate what you do so thank you for that thank you and the last time I was uh, asking you a question, you guys uh, hooked me up with MAPS 15, and I've been doing the advanced program. And I, I'm i here to ask some questions about it. Okay. So in phase two, I noticed there's no shoulder exercises. And uh, that's kind of uh, one of the parts of my body that I like to stay consistent on because uh, – I don't know. I guess I'm self-conscious, but I want to grow my shoulders. So I just like to do a bit of a focus on it. So there's something I could add into phase two to keep my shoulders kind of stimulated. Or I know there you have the uh, reverse flies or whatever yeah. in there. Uh, so is that enough? Or? So, it is, well, so it, it is if you consider the first phase and the third phase. So and also that you're doing compound lifts like yeah. rows and well, bench I was just going to say, so MAPS 15 is not a body, although you're working out body parts, right? You are training body parts. Not a body sculpt. It's program. not a body part program. It's a movement program. So without getting too deep in the weeds here, you can generally, this is very general, okay? So very, very general breakdown I'm going to give you, but you could generally look at workout programs, strength training workout programs as either body part focused or movement focused. So to give you kind of two extreme examples, powerlifting routine, movement focused, okay? Bodybuilding routine, body part focused. Both of them have value. Both of them have a lot of value. Now, when we're considering writing a program where you're only gonna work out 20 minutes a day, you're you're, you're gonna get much more value focusing on movements than you are gonna be focusing on just body parts. Otherwise, what it would look like, a 20 minute a day or 15 minute a day body part focused workout would look like a single body part a day, uh, you know, for like two exercises. So it'd be this really weird body part split routine. You wouldn't get enough volume or frequency. It just wouldn't give you much for the time being spent in the gym or in your garage or whatever. But MAPS 15, we knew, okay, we got limited amount of time. We need to maximize the person's results. And in that context, movement focused is more valuable. Focusing on movements is going to give you better results. So in phase two, you do do the rear flies, but you are doing horizontal presses, like you know bench presses, whatever. So you're sh- and then phase one and phase three incorporates mm-hmm. more. You know if if you want to look at it from a body part perspective, uh, you know shoulder direct shoulder work. But mm-hmm. as you go through the program, you'll see. I mean, it just it does train the, the whole body uh, is what you're focusing on. Now that being said, okay, there here this is also where there's room for modification and in, in adding to or taking away from some of our programs. So to Sal's point, if we were to, if we had only 20 minutes, this is how we would comprise these exercises. This gives everybody the biggest bang for their buck right. for overall body sculpting, overall strength yeah. building, systemic good, effect of yeah. all muscles. So th- like, and if I only had that much time, I would follow it to a T. Now let's say you have days where you can be in there for 30 minutes. Or you have some a, a, a little ten minute window some other time in the day, like and and you really you have an, an area like your shoulders that you want to put extra energy towards. That's how I would do it. I'd say, hey, when you got an extra five ten minutes later on in the day, go get some shoulder presses or some lateral raises. That's it. Or if you know you got you know, that day instead of only twenty minutes, you got thirty to forty minutes. 
add some shoulder presses into the workout because you have something very specific that you you want to focus on while doing this, I would incorporate them like that. But if you only had 15 to 20 minutes, I would follow the program as laid out because I think it's the biggest bang for the buck. But that doesn't mean that I couldn't find ways to modify it for somebody who has a very specific goal, like you're saying. Yeah. Sebastian, we lost your okay. camera there for a second. Yeah, my my video just uh, died on me. It won't start back up, but I, I'm, I'm still here. <laughs> okay. No. So you heard everything, yeah? Yeah, yeah, I got gotcha. you. Okay, so does that make sense? I mean, so you can totally modify that, um, how you feel best as far as adding some more shoulder work in there if you feel like they're not getting enough tension. So, but, and by the way, uh, this is something for me too. So like shoulders are an area I like to focus on. I notice when my shoulder shoulders are developed, it just makes my, my, my entire upper body look better to me. And because I tend to be aesthetic driven, I care about that. So even when I run through our MAPS 20 protocol, I might add more shoulder stuff into it. But mm -hmm. then I also extends the program sometimes longer than 20 minutes. And the goal for us was keeping it down to that 15 to 20 minutes. Therefore, certain things we, we would have to sacrifice and a basic lateral raise is going to get sacrificed when I only have a certain amount of time with a, with a client. Okay. So you, you do have a, a dumbbell presses there on two of the days. So if I substituted uh, overhead presses instead of the bench, yeah, you're fine. Like dumbbell bench you press, do that. that's, that's yeah. cool. Totally yep. fine. Do them standing. Yep. Okay. Yeah. And, and then uh, other questions with that, uh, there are only three-week phases. Would there be a benefit to extending those phases? Because I really like the program. Like, uh, I work shift work, and I have four kids, so it's just awesome being able to duck out into the garage 20 minutes, bang out a workout, and back to just cycle through life, it. right? Yeah. You cycle through it, phase mm -hmm. one, phase two, three, phase three, or, back to phase one, or, or add a week. Or to add a one. week. Yeah. Yeah. Either one's fine. Yep. You, you can add. You could add a week into there. You just want to be careful. Like so, I mean, most of the research is what three to six weeks is where yeah. the optimal time is. We lean towards the three, just so you're you're constantly kind of changing and moving through that. If you let, if you did four or five, I think you would be fine. Mm -hmm. So, um, you could extend, you could extend the, yeah. the phases or do what Sal said, which Sal said, which is run through it and then just run through it again. You'd That's be okay. how I would do it. Yeah. Either one. Okay. And it is, is there a, like, I'd like to do maps for performance. That's I, I bought it. I'm kind of would like to do it. Is there any way to do that? Uh, being a shift worker and not having like what I do is one week I work two days and then the other work, the other week I work four or five days. So is there a way to do one week, do like the functional workouts and then next week focus on mo mobility and just alternate like that? Would that work? Or yeah. I mean, you could do, you, recommend it? you could definitely, and this is when, you know, individual lifestyle and variance makes a big difference. You could definitely work out more when you can and work out less when you can't. Mm -hmm. There's nothing wrong with that, especially if you have some experience training your body and you know how to do that without really compromising the programming. So you could definitely do that. Mm-hmm. All right, that that all uh, makes sense. So, all right, I think that's all the questions no I had for you guys. I gl I'm glad you're you're enjoying Maps uh, 15, though. A lot of people don't realize. Oh man, just how great absolute! It like I was worried about it because I was going from you know working out three times a week, hour workouts, and then going to that. It's daily, but the wife's happy with it. She doesn't mind me ducking out for 15, 20 minutes to the garage. So it's just it's so convenient, and the results are really good as well. Like I feel like I'm kind of doing a bulk right now and I feel like I'm filling out my shirts a little better and oh, yeah. yeah, absolutely love it. So thank you so much. It for works. Man. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah. Thank you, Sebastian. Thank you. Thanks for calling in. Thank you. You got it. Yeah. Uh, I mean, that's, that's how we all felt when we did, <laughs> when we were experimenting with the program, like uh, I didn't expect to make strength gains. Uh, yeah. You, know, you just felt little. like it was a pure sacrifice, but uh, when you start getting into it, it's actually one of those things that blows your mind, like more energy. And a lot of times you get uh, those results that you weren't getting. It does. And again, you know, um, and this is important for people to understand when you're doing a movement focused workout, the focus of the workout is on the movement, not necessarily feeling the body parts and the muscles and Mm -hmm. squeeze and pump and all that stuff versus body part focused workouts where you're not really necessarily concerned with the movement aside from good form. You're trying to feel the target muscles. Right. Both have value. They both, both have value. Beneficial. You That's know, it. you no, want to run a cycle of both. I'm glad we got this question because I'm sure there's people that have purchased the program that were probably wondering the, the same question. And it's just like, listen, 
I, if someone came to me and said, hey, Adam, I have a bodybuilding competition next mo- or in a few months, what program should I run? I would, regardless of their time, I wouldn't say Math 15 is the ideal program for them. But if someone said, I only have 15 to 20 minutes, how do I get the biggest bang for my mm-hmm. buck? That's the program. That's it. And, and you're not going to see certain exercises in there because they take up time and don't give us as much return as other ones. And so we had to make that, uh, that decision as we are programming, like, hey, sure, I would pr- selfishly, because I like shoulder work. Work, love to throw this in here, but then I'm I'm missing out on a row. Oh man, we got to put a row in right, right there. Or oh, hey, we should. I would love to do these because these I love these exercises. A hamstring curl, but oh my god, then then we then we sacrifice a, a barbell back squat. Of course not. We're not. You know what I'm saying? So those decisions have to be made. You're going to have to sacrifice certain movements if we're limited to time. And that was written to give you the biggest bang for your buck in the shortest amount of time. Totally. Look, if you like Mind Pump, head over to MindPumpFree.com and check out our guides. We have guides that can help you with almost any health or fitness goal. You can also find all of us on social media. So Justin is on Instagram at Mind Pump Justin. Adam is on Instagram at Mind Pump Adam. And you can find me on Twitter at Mind Pump Sal. Today, we're going to teach you everything you need to know to build a strong, well-developed chest. When I think of you know, weak points and, and areas that I struggled with developing for a, a really long time, chest was up there with the- Yeah, it was for me. It was for me, for sure. I got more caught up in the weight I could lift versus how I was developing my body. I think it's one of the most challenging muscles to develop for most people because the form and technique. 